Well, good day. Today we're doing another video on the condensate system. Um, we're throwing a lot of information out and we're not repeating much. So these videos are pretty fast paced, um, a lot of information. If there's stuff we're talking about, we're not explaining it, it's probably been covered in another video. Like I'm saying, we're not wasting much time going back over stuff. It's just a lot of information. Okay, this is the condensate system. Um, the purpose of the condensate system, condensed low pressure steam turbine, steam, uh, collects various condensate sources, deaerates, heats, and treats condensate to the boiler. Um, this plant has two separate low pressure turbines. Uh, they're both feeding surface condensers that are the same and they're tied together. Some plants have an axial flow low pressure turbine that goes straight through the turbine right into the condenser so your surface condenser and the turbine are on the same level. This one, the low pressure turbine, sits a floor above. Uh, the steam comes in the center of the low pressure turbine and spreads both directions for balancing. Uh, comes out of the end down to your surface condenser where the steam is condensed back to water. Um, from here it goes through a suction strainer. There's a lot of debris ends up in surface condensers. So you want to protect the pump so they have a screen on it. You have a deep well condensate pump. Purpose of this pump is to pump the water back up to the deaerator. Uh, you have an arc valve. This automatic recirculation control valve. Its purpose is acts as a check valve. When the check valve closes or partially closes, it opens up a line back to the surface condenser to maintain minimum flow through the pump. You have a discharge valve. You go over to a polisher. This plant uses polishers. Uh, cat ion and anion resins in the bed mixed together. It takes all your positive and negative charged particles and also provides filtration of the water. From here goes the gland steam condenser. This condenses all the excess steam coming from your steam turbine steam seals, uh, your feed pump turbine, and your main turbines. From here, you have a deaerator level control valve. It's downstream of the gland steam condenser. So if this shuts off high deaerator level, the level control valve opens and maintains flow through your gland steam condenser. This is important as there's steam always coming back into your gland steam condenser. From here it goes to the low pressure feed water heaters. These are condensing steam out of the low pressure turbine. Um, these three are actually inside the shell of the condenser. These valves here, this shows the outside piping to it. Um, you got 1A, 1B, these two come off the same stage of the each turbine and feed water heater 2 is a little higher stage up. Then it goes to feed water heater 3 and to the deaerator. The condensate comes out of feed water heater 3, go to feed water heater 2. Uh, there's still heat that can be extracted from feed water 2, then it goes for 1A, 1B, extracts more heat out of the water, and then it's returned back to the surface condenser. Okay, here's the condensate system. Um, the steam comes in low pressure turbine. It flows both directions through your turbine for balancing. Um, steam is exhausted, down goes through the tubes. You have approximately 243,000 cubic feet a second of steam coming down. And there's 180,000 gallons a minute of water going through. Um, a lot of these numbers are in English units. I know people watch this all over the world and they use metric units, which a lot of plants will have both metric and English. So I hope everything goes to metric eventually, but the big thing is just the ratios of the pressures and flows on this. Um, both sides are the same. These tubes here are 90-10, 90% copper, 10% nickel. The upper tubes are 90-30, 90% copper, 30% nickel with shields. Anytime you have steam condensing, you have moisture in it, high velocity, steam is eroding the top tubes. Uh, there's also a lot of bracing on these tubes. There's a lot of vibration. These tubes are probably 40 feet long, fairly thin material for heat transfer. So you have a vibration issues. Um, normally you'll fill the boiler, the surface sensor, start up, just use the condensate tank, gravity will feed. Once you pull a vacuum, 
then you'll pull the water up and spray. This will do a lot of, this, a lot of the aeration of the water. Um, some plants use pumps for deem in, but you can open the bypass and probably pull it in if you get in trouble. Uh, they're water, it's a um, boiler feed pump recirc. It's brought back. Steam traps and orifices. All your steam pipes have traps on them. Some will have a play with a little hole in the orifice to maintain a little bit of steam flow, make sure there's no moisture building up. Your boiler blowdown comes back. Uh, feed water heater drains on your low pressure feed water end up back here and also high level dumps Feed water heaters You do not want water to go back up to your turbine. That'd be catastrophic and if your turbine trips You don't want the steam the water here flashing back to steam and the steam coming back through so you have um, bleeder trip valves They're a check valve with uh, Spring closed assist on them just to make sure you don't get steam back in the turbine. Once your generator breaker opens, there's enough energy to drive your turbine to failure. Um, some newer plants, they'll use stainless steel and titanium tubes. There's various trade-offs to your tubes. The copper does have um, uh, biological fouling properties and it's cheaper material, good heat transfer. Um, there's, there's lanes cut into the surface condenser, various tube pass to get the steam into the surface condenser then there's lanes cut to get the condensate back out of the surface condenser in the center there's tubes removed to get out the air non-condensable gases as you spray water in O2 and CO2 are being released uh, along with any dissolved gases if you have a vacuum pump it can either be a um, liquid ring vacuum pump or steam jet air ejectors uh, you measure the air leakage coming off this is very important this will tell you if you have leaks in your system. How uh, your boiler feed pump exhaust comes back in. Your pump's a deep well pump because you cannot pump out of a vacuum. Um, it's 25 foot deep well, and it's about eight feet from the top to the surface condenser, which gives us about 32 feet, 33 feet. So one PSI is equal to 2.3 uh, feet of water. So for every 2.3 feet you pick up a pound. So if this is minus 14 uh, PSI up here you need 32.3 feet to get back to 14.7 or atmospheric. If this is 14 PSI absolute that means you have 0.7 PSI um, vacuum. So the big thing on this pump is to use the weight of the water to get back to zero so you can actually pump out of here. If you just put a pump right here, you'd try to flow back in, uh, it wouldn't work. There are some condensate pumps that will work, but you have a pump and then you have a little equalizing line that goes down to the center of the impeller. So that, that way you'll just see the weight of the water. Uh, it's a six stage pump. Each stage boosts the pressure, probably 65 PSI. Uh, the water comes in through the impeller, through the diffuser section back to another impeller and now if this changes the flow of the water this water spinning very quickly this straightens the flow back out uh, it converts velocity back to pressure and that feeds the next stage you have your autom automatic recirculation control valve this is a check valve with a recirc on it to maintain minimum flow through the pump there's orifice plates to drop the pressure if you have high velocity flow through this line you can actually erode the line um, polishers, you have a bunch of sampling. You look for specific conductivity, cat conductivity, pH, and O2. This is cation conductivity. Um, the polisher, this plant uses a polisher in case you have any tube leaks. It cleans up the water, takes all the minerals, and it removes any particulate. So if you have a tube leak, you'll see your polishers going out a lot faster than usual. I'm um, glad steam condenser. This is really important to maintain flow through this at all times. It's collecting all the excess steam coming off your steam turbine seals. Let's say your deaerator valve, this can go closed at high deaerator level, and this one will open. This plant step about 30% flow. It opens just to maintain flow through the system. Your feed water heaters, they're just trying to extract more energy. Um, 
A lot of your steam is condensed into feed water heaters. These numbers down here are maximum flows. At full load, a lot, of this, a lot of the steam is being condensed. Maybe a fifth of it to a quarter is being condensed in feed water heaters and used for your boiler feed pump drive. Okay, this is the operation of the condensate system. Um, like I say, both sides are the same. Have your steam coming down. We haven't talked much about expansion. Um, everything has expansion joints and power plants. Either they'll bend the steam, make a loop with the steam lines. Uh, like the cooling water coming in has rubber expansion joints. This one has a rubber expansion joint from your low pressure steam turbine casing and the surface condenser. There is a rubber seal inside that and the outside is filled up with water in case there's any leaks you'll suck water in so these are called dog bone seals as an operator you should check make sure there's water in these and if you have a problem maintaining water you have one of your seals you're giving out um, the big thing with a surface condenser is keeping air out as you can see we have a lot of different feeds coming back in steam traps and orifices this goes through the whole plant there's an extensive amount of piping and when you shut down somebody opens up a drain it gets left open as soon as you pull vacuum, you won't see it. It's sucking air in. So it's best to take a piece of paper and go along and find them. Using your hands is kind of not a good idea. could get stuck on it. <laughs> but um, you want to look for leaks. And you also want to watch your condenser vacuum. If you notice the vacuum is higher than it should be, you probably have a leak. Um, I've seen like a three-quarter inch valve left open. It'll cost you 10 megawatts. You close that and you jump in power out nothing else changes there's a lot of leak detection sample points on these there'll be a tray underneath these tubes each side looking for leaks you take sample off the bottom so you can kind of locate where the leak is um, condensers require cleanliness and tightliness that's the big thing with these uh, there's a terminal difference is the temperature corresponds to the condensing pressure absolute temperature versus outlet water temperature. This is if this is condensing and it's 100 degrees the vapor pressure, your water coming out should be upper 90s maximum efficiency. Um, if this temperature starts dropping on the outlet water, goes down like the 80s, then you know your tubes are starting to get build up on them. Or they could be plugging up too. Now you have your surface water traveling screens that prevents this, but there can be a lot of debris built up on your tube sheets and it will cost you plant efficiency. You'll have a hard time maintaining vacuum. It'll start rising on you if your tubes plug up from mechanical debris or if they start building the scale up. Now your pumps, you have a thrust bearing on top. You check wells, these have a packing. You have to adjust that. The chemistry control. We have specific conductivity. This is just straight conductivity. It's measuring the conductivity of the water coming out. You have cation conductivity. It takes a sample and goes through a resin bed. A little resin tube. They're, they're fairly small. It strips all the cation resin, all the cat anions, which are your water treatment chemicals, calcium, magnesiums. So you're left with chloride, sulfates, various process, various chemicals that tell you the condition of the water. You have a pH. This is very important for corrosion. You have oxygen. This can tell you how much oxygen is coming in. If you have a leak, you'll be seeing this come up. Your pulse shirt just cleans up the water. If you have a tube leak on well, this type of plant, this basically takes all the minerals back out of the water. Now, if this starts giving out on you faster than it should, then you know you have a tube leak. You'll see it here and you can see it here so you know you have a, a tube leak. Usually you'll run as long as you can uh, until you make an outage or it gets the point where you cannot deal with it anymore. The feed water heaters once a month should do a high level trip test. You close the condensate coming out and the level raises, rises um, around 30, 38 inches on these. The dump valve opens and it drains the water out and closes both water lines into it. This is just showing the cooling water to the feed water heaters only. You got the steam comes in, then there's a condensate line that comes out on the shell side. This is just showing the tube end of it. There are two paths. Water goes through down the other end and it comes back. 
So like I say, the, feed, the condensate comes out of feed water heater three down to two, and it splits to both one A, one B, because there's still heat energy. This water's hotter than here, so you come down here and extract more heat energy out of it. But one thing you cannot have is this water to get high and go back up into the turbine. That's devastating. And you have your bleeder trip valves. They need to be checked every shift, make sure they're gonna function. Uh, make sure they're not stuck. The big thing of those, they'll keep the steam, water from flashing to steam, going up and driving your turbine to failure. This goes up to the generator. It's probably 70 feet above here. So it takes quite a bit of pressure to push up there. And you got about 60, 70 pounds on the generator. Okay, this is show and tell. This is a condenser tube. I see they're fairly thin. It's made out of copper and nickel alloy. They're about 40 feet long. And there's tube supports every so often to minimize the vibration. That kind of velocity coming through here, hitting these tubes, it's pretty substantial. This one got a small hole right where the tube support was. Um, usually once a year you'll go and put water on the water box side, go in there and find the leaks. Then you can put plugs in the tube side and seal the tube off. There's a pretty good percentage of tubes that you can plug before you start having problems. They're designed with extra tubes. On um, this one here, you can see the scale buildup inside of it. This is an older tube. So as the hot warm water drops out the calcium and magnesium, it'll plate out. May get some silica too forming, but that'll cut down the efficiency of the surface condenser. This just shows a multi-stage pump. This is a stage out of a well pump. This is about a 15 horse pump. It's actually a pretty good pump, surprising it's all plastic, but they are. You have your impeller section. Here's the suction of it. Uh, the discharge of your impeller, as it comes out, it goes back down your diffuser section, which is opposite. This is where the pressure is produced at in the pump. You have high velocity water. As it slows down, it converts to pressure. So your pressure and velocity are kind of inverse proportion to each other. Uh, right here will be your next pump suction. So this puts out about 35, 40 pounds. Um, you stack these until you get enough pressure to equal the amount of head of water. You need to pump the water out of the well. So this one here would probably push water about 75 feet or so up. Um, you can see there's some damage to it. This pump ran out of water and disintegrated. Anytime you run one of these pumps out of water, they'll disintegrate. Same as sump pumps. Any pump that uses water for water lubricated bushings. You run them out of water, that's pretty much the end of it. It just sits down here in a little can and the next stage sticks on, bolts on that. Um, here's your shaft, goes through a hex shaft to drive it. So these, they just add stages to get the amount of pressure you need or how many feet of lift you'll need from the well pump. I think this one had 10 stages or so on it. There's another little impeller. Sometimes you can use a regular pump to pull out of a surface condenser. Um, you'll have a line that comes into the center. This goes back to your surface condenser so that the impeller sees the weight of the water only. This pressure here is equal to the pressure in your surface condenser. Water will flow in. Without this line, no water will flow in. It's, it's trying to suck it back. So sometimes they'll use this design on small surface condenser pumps. Same thing as you see as it moves, it, it flings the water to the outside. High velocity, the diameter of your impeller and the speed determines the velocity of the water, which corresponds to the discharge pressure in your volute or your diffuser section on the pump, depends kind of the pump. The, the size of your spacing here determines the volume of water, which determines your pump horsepower you need. The diameter of the impeller and the speed determines the pressure you'll put out. Okay, this is a barometric condenser. We decided just to throw this in. Um, some of the pictures of the old power plants, you'll see a tower with a tank on it, sitting outside of the buildings. Uh, the purpose of this was to condense the turbine exhaust steam. Um, you'd spray water in the top, this would be your turbine exhaust. It'd create a vacuum. As you know, creating a vacuum for your turbine exhaust increases the efficiency about 30% or so. The height 
would actually give you a positive pressure at the drain. So up here it could be minus 14 PSI, 40 foot tall, give you about 3 PSI down here at the drain. These threw away the condensate. You didn't bring the condensate back to the boiler. Uh, sometimes you didn't want your condensate back if you're using like an amine, filming amine for your steam line treatment, or if you had steam engines, anything with oil lubrication, chance of getting oil contaminants back. You'd use these, you'd still get the efficiency of your steam turbine, uh, get rid of the water. Back then, while some of the boilers were like 250 PSI, use zeolite softening, kind of like your house softener, sodium. Replacing the calcium magnesium with sodium. Um, salt, sodium chloride is used to regenerate your softener. Uh, they'd add sodium sulfite for oxygen scavenger in the boiler. And another compound keeps sludge from building up in the boiler. The boilers are blown down a lot, get rid of the sludge build up. So it's a lot different than the plants nowadays. I have to have very pure water. These you didn't care about silica in the water as much. Sodium and chlorides really weren't a big issue. Higher temperatures and pressures, silica and sodium chlorides become a major issue. So this was, if you see pictures of old power plants, you see a tower with a tank on top, lines going into it. There's probably a barometric condenser. This is kind of a neat thing that was done back about the turn of the century.